This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Brian Weaver. I'm the VP of um, Solutions here at NSA, and I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Piovi uh, on our webinar series. This is our number 53. Uh, Piovi is a transportation multi carrier shipping system. So we're very pleased to bring them uh, to your attention today. I would ask that everybody, uh, please, if you have questions, to enter them into the chat box, um, and we will make sure we address those towards the end of our session today. Uh, we also have a testimonial that will be on with us later, so um, please make sure you stick around for that. And we also have a promotion as well, so uh, make sure you stick on to the end so that we cover that with you also. And uh, next slide. So our two speakers for today, we have um, Pat uh, Bishop, who will be doing um, um, a lot of the presenting for us. He's the director of global sales, uh, along with Raul. And then uh, Dennis Dominion, uh, Dominiani is a VP of Information Technologies at Power Intel, and he will be our testimonial for today's session. And with that, Pat, I'll ask you to take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome, everybody. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to join this presentation. Um, so quickly, I'm just going to cover the, uh, the the agenda for today's uh, webinar. Um, so at first, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give share a couple slides. I'll go over a quick company uh, over, overview of POV, uh, and then we'll show you a couple of the features um, that we're going to be demonstrating today. Um, and then right after that, we're going to get into the live demonstration. Uh, so what we're going to cover during the demonstration today is we're going to look at address validation. Um, so having the system being able to validate and make sure you're shipping to the correct address. Uh, we'll go through our rate shopping uh, in business rules. So being able to, uh, you know, compare your different rates from a parcel side, the LTL side, and even a, a spot quote side. Um, so not having to go into multiple different carrier websites or look up multiple different tariffs that you have with the, uh, different carriers. Uh, being able to bring up back all those rate directly uh, inside one platform. Uh, and then we'll get into the shipment execution. Uh, so being able to actually execute a shipment, get all your documentation uh, for both, you know, parcel, LTL, truckload, uh, being able to look at your, your bill of lading, your pallet labels, any uh, international documents that you guys might need. Uh, and then we'll cover you, uh, we'll cover the actual spot quote process of being able to request a spot quote. Um, to your carriers where you don't have to send email and BCC a bunch of different carriers uh, where you can just handle that directly from the platform and that will communicate directly back into the platform once those carriers respond. I'll show you some visibility. So end to end tracking um, for, you know, parcel LTL. Uh, and then we'll also show you the feature um, that we have is around the ocean container tracking visibility. So if any of you guys are getting any inbound containers, um, you know, from your suppliers, uh, we have a tool that can help you keep visibility and you know know exactly when those containers going to actually hit the port so you can uh, rearrange the freight accordingly and then the last thing we'll get into is the invoice auditing uh, so we'll show you how our system works where you can autom automatically automate the process of auditing invoices um, so making sure that when you create a quote and you bill, uh, book that quote you want to make sure that you're getting paid that uh, paying that carry the right amount. So I'll show you what that looks like as well. And then we also have um, a customer experience story. Uh, Dennis from Power and Tell, um, they implemented POV. So he has uh, volunteered to jump on and share his experience um, during the implementation and how that's helped Power and Tell going forward. And then <clears throat> lastly, like Brian had mentioned, we'll uh, save some time for a Q&A session. Uh, so if you do have any questions during the demonstration as I'm going through it, feel free to put that in the question chat or write it down and then uh, you can ask those questions toward the end. All right, so let's jump into it. So just a, a little bit about POV. So we POV is a, a cloud-based uh, TMS. Um, so we are hosted on the cloud, um, so we're not on-prem. Um, so what that means is you can log into POV uh, pretty much wherever you have internet access. So if you're on a mobile uh, tablet, a laptop, uh, if you're out of the out of the country or you're traveling, you're on vacation, uh, you have the ability to log into POV and you can stay on top of what's going on within your company when it comes to the logistics side. Um, so the way we work is we have built-in integrations um, with all the uh, carriers that we work with. Um, and how we do that is we connect to them via their different APIs. 
Um, so if you were looking to just get a rate, uh, or if you're looking to actually create and book a shipment, or you're looking for tracking information, or you're looking for a POD, uh, we communicate via APIs with all different carriers to pull all that information directly into our system. Um, so you have one central data repository of all that information, and you're not going to different, um, you know, multiple systems to look for that information. Um, <clears throat> we also can manually load. So if a carrier uh, doesn't support APIs, we can manually load tariffs into our system, and then we can also use EDI as well. Um, we integrate, you know, with Infor, uh, CSD, TWL, M3, CSI. Uh, we can integrate with e-commerce systems. So if you do have a an e-commerce system, we can simply integrate with that system as well. And if you want to share your rates with your customers, you can utilize the API that we have. Um, we also have a complete set of REST APIs and webhooks. So for customers that like to work directly inside of maybe their N4 system, and they don't want to travel into a separate system like a TMS, like POV, we do have different APIs and webhooks where you can basically black box our system and use that directly inside of your internal systems uh, for convenience. And then we have different UIs and UX built for ease of use and uh, efficient shipping. You'll see once I get into the demonstration, um, you'll see, see how easy our UI is. Um, very user friendly, uh, and it really takes you know less than a few hours to get an end user trained on it. And really, what we're looking to do is just automate the whole shipping process. Um, so we want systems to communicate to each other. Uh, we don't need people you know keying in information, uh, you know, wasting time. So we'd rather just hook systems directly up and have those systems talk to each other and push in and pull information back and forth. And we work with, you know, basically anybody that ships anything. So we have a lot of customers in the distribution space, e-commerce, um, the health, healthcare, manufacturing, high tech, food and beverage. Pretty much if you're putting anything on a, a van, a truck or a steamship, um, you know, those are the type of customers that we work with every single day. Uh, here's just a little uh, screenshot of some of the logos um, of our customers. Um, you know, we, we pride ourselves on our support and implementation. So, you know, if any of any of you guys decide that you wanted to go with POV, uh, we have plenty of customers that would be reference customers for you. Um, so here's just a, a little screenshot of, of some of the customers that we're working with today. All right. Sorry, skip the screen here. So some of our, our modules um, that, you know, we're going to cover some of these today. Obviously, we are <clears throat> only have so much time, so I'm not going to be able to, you know, give a, a full-blown demonstration, but I'm going to give a very high-level demonstration. Um, we're going to cover, you know, address validation. So being able to make sure that, you know, your, your, the address you're shipping to is, is a valid uh, address. If it's a residential or a commercial address, uh, you know, that matters uh, when you're shipping. It matters to your carriers and it matters to your price. So you always want to make sure that you're shipping to the correct address. So we'll cover that part of it. Uh, we'll, we also provide re restricted party screening. Um, so if you, you know, have any customers that, you know, are maybe overdue in payments or maybe the government uh, has restrictions on them, uh, we have different business rules where you can set up uh, where it can restrict certain parties and certain users of the system um, so they know, hey, you know, we're not shipping to this customer because X, Y, Z. Uh, so I'll cover the business rule engine, engine towards the end. Um, and the other thing that we can do is you can file your AES direct and ACE filing directly through our system. Um, so, you know, what that means is typically if you're working with a broker, um, the broker will have to go ahead or your freight forwarder will have to go ahead and file that for you. And they typically charge, you know, anywhere from 20 to $30, um, where we are already set up, we're connected, and you can actually do that directly from the TMS. Uh, we're going to go through the rate shopping, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so being able to view all your carrier negotiated rates, the rates that you've negotiated with your parcel, your LTL carriers, um, you know, having them all display on one screen uh, to make sure that, hey, you know, you're shipping the most cost effective way, right? If you're, if you're always interested in shipping the lowest cost carrier, um, you can sort by lowest cost. If you're looking to get the shipment expedited and it's got to get there in the next day, uh, we allow you to show all different options and the end user can decide on what's the best method to ship that certain uh, shipment. Uh, the business rule engine, like I had just mentioned, um, if you have certain customers, let's say, for example, that, you know, customer Y 
you know, only likes, um, you know, UPS going into their dock, uh, we can set up different rules where you can have, you know, that specific customer only show UPS when you're shipping to that customer. Or if you have, you know, certain rates that are better in certain, you know, postal codes, you can set up those postal codes in the business rule engine and say, hey, if we're shipping between postal code 001 and 009, use this carrier. Um, so a lot of different options on that part. And then the spot quote, like I mentioned, if you have shipments that, you know, might be 10 or 12 pallets, they're a little more than what your standard contract is, what your LTL carries, and you want to push that to a spot rate, uh, I'm going to show you how that works and how you can do that directly from the system. Um, communicates directly with the carrier. The carrier doesn't need a login. They just get a link via their email, and then they can go ahead and bid on that rate. <clears throat> And then lastly, the whole shipment execution process. Uh, so being able to create your shipment, um, book your shipment with the carrier, you know, schedule automatic uh, pickups, being able to generate, you know, automatic pro numbers, and then being able to print all your documentation. So your bill of ladens, your labels, any, you know, uh, international uh, invoices, anything like that, you can print directly from the TMS. And then I'll go into the visibility where we actually bring back the proof of deliveries. We actually store those PODs directly in the system for however long as you want. Um, I know some carriers that they'll get rid of them after a few months or up to a year. But if you ever have to go back or if you have an audit, we store that information in the TMS uh, for as long as you're a customer. And then the last thing I'll cover is the invoice audit. Um, so the invoice audit, uh, what that allows you know us to do is to, you know, you book a shipment inside a POV you agree upon a rate. Now, when that shipment delivers, the carrier will actually in return give you an invoice for that. Now you want to make sure that the carrier is actually billing you what you're actually quoted. And our system will look at it and it will compare it versus what you booked it for versus what you were billed. And you can set a tolerance where, hey, if it's under $20, have the system automatically approve it. I'm not going to go fight in a carrier for 20 bucks. Or you can do down to the exact penny. Totally up to you. But our system will flag the ones that, you know, approve the ones that match and then we'll flag the ones that don't match. And then your team would just have to go in and say, let me see the ones that don't match. I have to go in and uh, either approve or disapprove those, or I have to get with my carrier rep and figure out exactly what happened. All right. And then the last thing I'll share before we get into the demo, here's just a few of our carriers that we're working with. You know, we work with, you know, almost all the parcel carriers that are out there, uh, US, Canada. Uh, we work with, almost all of, of the major LTL carriers, the regional carriers. Uh, we do work with brokers as well. So if you do have a broker that you work with, uh, you know, as long as they have an API, we can connect with them uh, as well. Um, <clears throat> we're continuously adding carriers. Uh, one thing one thing that we, um, you know, don't do is we don't charge customers per carriers. So if there's a carrier in the system that we don't have, uh, we want as many carriers as as we can get into the system. So, you know, if the carrier supports an API, we'll we'll get the documentation, we'll connect that carrier, and we do it at no cost. If the carrier doesn't support API, uh, API, excuse me, uh, if they have a manual tariff or if you have pallet rates, uh, we can we can load those uh, those rates into the system as well. Obviously, API that's real time. You know, and as your rates uh, change, and you know, if the next year the carrier comes and they give you a GRI. Uh, once that carrier makes an update in their system, it's automatically reflected directly in the TMS. So um, that's all for now. What I'll do is I'll, we'll get into the uh, the demonstration, and then uh, we'll uh, do a little Q&A at the end um, here. So let me just close this out, and now we'll get into the demonstration. All right, so first things first. Once a user logs in, um, we support single sign-on. Uh, again, we are cloud-based, so you know if you want to lab log in from a, a laptop, uh, desktop, uh, an iPad, uh, you have the ability. So once the user logs in, this is the main screen that it's going to bring you to. And what I would say is probably 90% of the time, the user is probably going to work directly on this screen. Okay. Um, so from this screen here, we can create a parcel shipment domestically. We can create an LTL shipment. We can create a international parcel shipment. And then we can even create a truckload spot quote shipment from here. Um, 
So when the user logs in, uh, each user, uh, we can set it up. So if you see here, the user that I'm logged in now, um, this is my location, North America Spare Parts. And now if we have multiple locations and Joe over in Phoenix is at another location, when Joe logs in, we can automatically default it to his location. So your default location is always going to be your ship from address. Okay. Um, right here, we're connected with Infor. So that means we're fully integrated with Infor. So what that means is our systems are talking to each other. So once an order is created inside Infor and that's ready to ship, that's going to get sent to POV. And it's going to allow the user just to simply scan in or type in that order number, delivery number, uh, whatever reference number that you guys use. And it's going to pull in all the information from Infor into the TMS. So you don't have to manually go in and type things in. Uh, or you don't have to fat finger Charlie like me uh, and make mistakes. So once we have that, you'll see down here, this is our ship too. Um, now, if we didn't have an integration with Infor, we can just manually go in and start typing this information. Um, we have an address book, so if you do have an address book, we can simply go in here and you can start searching for one of your addresses. So you don't have to be fully integrated uh, to take the full benefits of the system, but being integrated, especially with Infor, is you know very uh, very key as it it streamlines the whole process. And then down here you'll see the carrier information, and I'm just giving you an overview of it. You'll see once I type in an order number, a lot of this information will populate. Um, so you see here you have your carrier. Um, if you already define your carrier prior to that order getting sent over, let's say, you know, customer service takes the phone call and they say, Hey, I want you to ship it with UPS. Uh, now that's entered into, uh, into, entered into Infor. Uh, once we pull in that order, it'll automatically de default to UPS. It's not locked. You can always go back. You can change it. Um, totally up to the end user, but you'll see here, you can ship, um, you know, inbound. So we do support inbound shipment. So if you're shipping inbound, you're controlling your inbound freight. You can uh, create inbound, you can create outbound, you can create third party, um, and you can also do third party pre uh, collect. Uh, so we have different options where it's just not an outbound solution. Uh, it's both manages both inbound and outbound. And then your references down here. Um, so if you have different reference numbers, so if you have a customer reference number, invoice number, PO, SO, and you want that information to show on your documentation, you can simply enter that in here. However, if that information's already in Infor, once it's sent over, that information will already populate. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to create right now. I'm going to create a um, just a, a parcel shipment. We'll do it domestic, and I'll show you how to execute that and what it looks like doing the compare rates. So if I take my order, again, we we integrate with printers, scanners, scales. So if you have a, a barcode or a pick ticket and you just want to go ahead and scan that order number and just hit search, you'll see here now I have information that's populated. Okay. So I, I know my ship too. Right now, this is saying that, hey, it, it, this order is supposed to ship with UPS. Uh, it came over with a PO number. So we're, we have a reference number here. And then here is my line item information here. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do it. You know, if it's already packed, totally fine. If it's not packed, totally fine as well. So you can select and we can have different box types. Um, so, you know, you can have bulk, cans, cabinets, cases, pallets, whatever you prefer. OK, and then you can see here we have our different quantities. So what I'm going to do on this one here is I'm just going to simply go ahead and I'm just going to pack all. Now I'm going to pack all these into one box. So now my balance is zero and both of these items are in this one package. It weighs 11 pounds, 11.5 pounds, and I have my dimensional information. Okay. Now the other thing uh, that we talked about was the address validation. Okay. So if I went in here and I simply maybe misspelled it, okay, it's really not a, a correct address, but if I click on this button here, what this is going to do, it's actually going to validate that, that address. So it says the address is not, oh, that was the wrong one. The address was not validated. So let me just uh, clear that out and redo it. And I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, we'll pack all. All right. So now if I come down here and I can, and what I'll do is I'm gonna, I want to actually compare it because maybe the preferred carry is UPS. But however, I just want to see what other rates I have available. If I just click on this compare options, 
what the system's doing now is it's actually looking at all my carry agreements and it's actually pinging the different carry APIs. And what it will do is it was gonna come back and it'll have my different rates available. So you see here, we have our USPS rates, we have UPS ground, FedEx, and then we have the different service levels, okay? Um, now all these columns, you'll see here, we have a few different columns, okay? So we have our discounted cost. So the discounted cost, that's, that's your cost. That's your discount that you have set up with your carrier. This is a test environment, so my discounts might look a little different because they are test accounts. Um, but you also have a markup cost. So if you want to mark up, if you want to provide like a shipping and handling fee to your customers, you can set that up per carrier. Uh, and you can either do a flat dollar amount or a percentage amount. So let's say on every shipment, you want to add a 10% markup. Um, our system will calculate that. And then that's the markup and that's the rate you can provide and you can bill your customer. Um, and then you'll see here, here's the published cost. Uh, we also provide the estimated delivery date. So again, if you're looking to expedite it and you need to get it there faster, you can sort by these different columns, okay? Or you can cert, uh, certainly uh, sort by your cost and so forth. Now you can also over here, um, your column options, you can add different columns in here. You can move these columns around. So whatever the end user prefers, you can go ahead in here and you can move these around and you can add different columns. But let's just say for this one here, uh, what we want to do is we'll actually just ship it with UPS ground. So once I click UPS ground, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click ship. Now, when I click ship, um, we're fully integrated with uh, all your, your, your Zebra printers, your printers, um, all of that, um, all, all of those electronics. So what will happen is once I click ship, this is automatically going to go feed my printer and all my documentation is going to print out. Okay. However, you guys can't see my printer. You don't know what's printed on my screen. So I'm going to show you what those documents would look like. So now that I just shipped, my shipment was processed. If I go into here to my history, here's the shipment that we had just done. Here's all the information on that shipment. So you can take a look, um, you know, the shipment number, who was the carrier. Um, you would have a pro number here, uh, a tracking number. Obviously, like I had mentioned, this is test. So they just bring back XXX. But you can see your ship from, your ship to, your units, and your cost. Now, if we go to our documentation tab here, you'll see that I have my label. And again, if this was a, a live shipment, it would actually print your barcode and your tracking number here as well. Uh, if you want to print these labels again, you can certainly do that. You can download them. Um, and then over here, we have a generic pack and slip as well. And if you wanted to, let's say, hey, I have a third party warehouse or, you know, maybe it's an inbound shipment and I want to email these to my my supplier. You can do that from here as well, too. All right. So that was a um, domestic parcel shipment. Now what we can do is we'll we'll go ahead and we'll do a LTL shipment. So, again, if I come in here and I just scan in my delivery number. I'm going to have all my information here. Okay. Now with LTL, uh, sometimes there's a, you know, you have accessorials. So you do have the ability to go in here and you can select specific accessorials that you have. Uh, here's just the ones that I have active for my account. Um, you can add more accessorials uh, if you have them. It, it all depends on your different contracts that you have with the carriers. Uh, but you can go ahead and select, you know, hey, maybe it needs an appointment delivery or we need a lift gate upon pickup. You know, we don't have a dock, so we need you uh, to bring a lift gate. Um, the other thing too, is if you look at parties, so here's your parties. So again, if you are shipping to third party or you're doing any kind of blind shipment, these fields here, you can always edit them if you need to. Um, but this is just a standard outbound prepaid shipment. So me as a shipper, I'm paying for it. It's going to my, um, you know, my ship uh, Rogers Corporation. Um, but I did want to just show that you do have the ability to, um, you know, adjust anything if you need to adjust any um, addresses or any of that information. Okay. Um, so again, what we'll do here is uh, we'll put this on a pallet. You know, it's, a, it's an LTL shipment. So we'll go ahead and select the pallet. Okay. We can put this down here. And now once we uh, pack all, all of this information is packed into this one pallet. So we have one pallet. 597 pounds. Um, you can always add more pallets. So if, if you do have more pallets, you can simply just add more. 
Um, you can click on this button. Let's just say we had, you know, three more of those same palette types. You can certainly add more palettes and you can put different quantities into different palettes as well. But for this example, I'll just go ahead and delete these. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we do provide, we do a calculation for the LTL class. Um, so we look at the weight and the dims, and then we'll provide a recommended weight class for you. Um, you do have the ability to add the NMF, NMFC number. Uh, we can store. So if you have an item book, we can store your items and we can actually, you know, add the NMFC numbers. Um, so they'll automatically display or again, whatever information is getting pulled from in for that information will all, uh, automatically be populated as well. So on this one here, what we'll do is we'll just run a quick rate compare, see, you know, what carriers have the better pricing. And again, these are all your negotiated rates. Um, so once we have that, so you see here, we got three different carriers, four different carriers. Um, you know, you, again, you can, you can sort them. Looks like our R and L rates are high. Um, but for this example, we'll just go ahead and go with a standard R and L rate. So once I select that carrier, okay. And again, if you want to add a reference number, so if I add a reference number here, so let's say I just want to put a PO number and I also want to put a customer reference number that they want to see. You can simply add that here. If you have any specific notes that you want to print on your bill of laden, you can add those by, on, on the note section here as well. And then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and ship it. So now again, this is printing on, on directly on you guys' printers. Um, so for the sake of it, we'll go back in here and we'll look at it. So you see here again, here's all my, my details of the specific shipment that I have. Okay. Now, if I go to my docs, you'll see, I have a few more documents that I have here. So here's your standard generic four by six label. Again, if this was a real shipment, we'd pre-assign that. So you'd have a pro number with the barcode on here and you can slap these on all your pallets that you have. Um, we have two different types of BOLs. Um, if you want to use your standard carrier bill laden, so this would be an RNL bill, uh, bill laden. So you can use the standard RNL. Uh, as long as the carrier offers the BOL through the API, their bill laden will return. Some carriers support it, some don't. Um, the majority of them are moving over to it because they want to keep it standard and use their bill laden. Um, but we also do have a generic bill laden, um, which is standard VIX bill laden here. Um, this logo here, we can customize, we can put your logo up here as well and then we also have our standard pack and slip as well and again that can be customized with your logo and then if you want a master bill laden where you have your standard vix bill laden but then you also have the line items below as well so we have multiple different options we know customers prefer different options when it comes to bill ladens um, so you do you do have the ability to to customize that as well all right so again i haven't i haven't left this screen um, so, you know, as a user, uh, I'm going to be working the majority of the time directly in this screen. So just to recap, we had done a parcel shipment. We've done a LTL shipment. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and do an international shipment. And I'll show you exactly how that works. And we're going to do it from the same screen. So if I go here, I scan my order number. Now we have our items. If you see over here, my ship too. Now we're shipping to Denmark. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different, okay? Same process, just a little bit different. So when it comes to the international side, if I click on international, um, there's a little bit more information in here, okay? So we actually do, through, through, our, um, through our service, we provide uh, paperless commercial invoices. Um, we don't charge for it. Some other TMSs charge for it. Um, but that's included with our standard package. So the paperless commercial invoice, it makes it streamlines it. It gets the carrier, the information in real time. Um, it, you know, doesn't allow for delays for them to, you know, process all the information, make sure the shipment's good. So if I just put on yes here, um, it's going to generate a paper commercial invoice and it's going to send it directly to the carrier. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, um, the information that's getting pulled over from Infor, again, you, you as the end user can always change that information. Nothing's locked here. So for example, if I just change this to, let's say a unit price of 50, okay, um, you know, I can change it. it. It'll update it on the order. 
And then if I go back here and let's just um, pack these into a box. And we can pack all. And now let's go ahead and compare our rates. All right. So now all my rates have come back. So I have USPS, I have DHL, I have UPS, and I have FedEx. Um, so let's just go ahead and here and we'll uh, click on, we'll go with UPS on this one here. We selected our carrier. I'm not going to add, I don't need any reference numbers here. And then what I'll go ahead and do is click on ship. And now once this shipment executes, I'll show you uh, the other documents because it's now, this is an international shipment. Okay. So again, here's all my information. Now, when I go to my docs, you'll see here that I have my commercial invoice. Okay. So I do have my labels, which were printed. And then here, here's my paperless commercial invoice that has got sent to the carrier. So again, automatically gets sent. Um, don't have any delays. Don't have to wait on the carrier. And then we also have our, you know, standard commercial invoice as well, too. And then your pack and slip. All right. So as far as execution, um, you know, again, we covered, you know, four different, four different things, right? We covered just a standard domestic parcel shipment, LTL shipment, international and the last thing what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do the last one which is the fourth is we're going to do a spot quote so i'll show you exactly what the spot quote process looks like and again a spot quote you know is more along the lines of you're looking probably for a truck or you're looking for more of a volume price uh volume price okay um so if you see here now that we have all of our um pallets so we have our pallets and you know in the LTL world, you know, typically if you're over, you know, 5,500 pounds or maybe seven or eight pallets, you're probably better off going to the spot market and getting a one-time rate with that carrier or even a broker or a local truck driver, right? So it doesn't matter if you have uh, a mom and pop who, you know, has two trailers and a truck, um, you can set them up in the system. Or if you're working directly with like a big broker like C.H. Robinson, TQL, or you just want to send it to your LTL carriers that you have rates with, uh, you can send it to them as well. So, you know, now that we have all our information here, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and click on the spot quote. And what I want to do is I want to get a spot quote on the shipment. Okay. So now you'll see here, we have all these different carriers. When we go through implementation, we'll set up all your carriers and we'll say, Hey, this is a spot quote carrier. And all you really need from them is just a, an email address. Okay. So we'll select these three carriers, um, the mode of transport, if it's going to be air, ground, ocean, rail, uh, we'll use ground. And let's just say our pickup date is today. Um, and then we, you know, our expected delivery date, we want this to get delivered on the 11th. Uh, and you can set the specific times. Let's just say uh, we'll go here. Currency code is US dollars. My equipment type you want a van, dry van, do you need a reefer, do you need a flatbed, temp controlled containers, we'll just say a dry van. And you can also set a bid limit where you can say, hey, I don't, you know, for this one, I typically know my my pricing that I get. I don't want to pay any more than $2,500. And then you can put any specific notes in here as well. Um, flexible on pick update if you have a truck around. All right. So now once I click save, what this will do here is it's going to show me that I've submitted this bid. Okay. And here's the three carries that I had sent it out to when I sent it. And what's the status? I've requested it. Okay. So now if I go into my email here, I'm Mark's trucking. So as, as a carrier, I would get this, this email. And again, see, I don't need a, I don't need a login. I don't need a password. I can just simply click on submit bid and it'll give me a, you know, an overview of, you know, what the customer is looking for. So if I click on submit bid, it's going to bring me into the back end. And this is where I have all the information that I need to bid on this. Okay. So it shows me the, the information to pick up the delivery, the packages, when they wanted to deliver by the mode of transport. So now if I just go in here and I click on bid, I'll say, okay, Hey, I can pick it up today. 
Um, you know, let's say we'll pick it up at 3 p.m. And then, hey, I can get it delivered on Monday. And we'll say we can get it delivered at 4.37. Now, as the carrier, oh, sorry. I did this wrong. Oh, sorry, my delivery date. Oh, 10 35 a.m. Okay. All right. So it's it's showing me that my my time was wrong because I want to deliver by 10 35 and I was past that 10 35. Now the carrier can simply add a tracking number in here. And then they could say, okay, hey, my base charge is gonna be fifteen hundred dollars. If they want to add, you know, fuel or, or any surcharges, they can certainly add them there, but this is my my all in rate and then what they'll do is they'll go ahead and submit it and now that's been submitted okay now as a user of pov if i go back into here and i simply go ahead and click on this uh, refresh button um, right here now once i click on this you'll see here mark's trucking viewed it here's when they viewed it and they've actually quoted it they submitted it um, I'll go ahead and take a look at it. They're giving me a rate of $1,500, and then I'm just going to simply go ahead and accept that rate. So once I accept that rate, now what's going to happen is that carrier is going to get notified, and they're going to know that they've been awarded that shipment. So if I go back into here, you'll see here, they've accepted my bid, and they can go ahead and they can view the bid. So that's how the spot quote process works. Don't have to leave the TMS. Um, carry doesn't need a login. They like working through, you know, an email. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with a lot of carriers in the past and it's much easier than them having to log into a system and go ahead and bid on things. Um, so as far as, you know, shipment planning and execution, I do want to show one more thing here, um, <clears throat> on the, on the address validation. So if I go ahead and clear and I'll just create a manual, um, I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to create a manual shipment and show you how the address validation works as it didn't really show too well uh, when I did it earlier. So if I go ahead and I just start typing in um, an address here. So if I go ahead and type in an address here, okay, um, I have my information. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and validate this. You'll see here that I get an error. It says a suite or unit number is required to achieve more exact match. So it's basically saying that, hey, this isn't a valid address. However, if I go in here and I put in suite 203 and then validate it, now it has the exact address and I can just select this address as now it's a, it's a valid address. I don't have any notes here. So that's just part of the address validation. All right. Now, the um, so we've covered um, some of the, um, the shipment execution. I know we're coming up on some time here, so I'll, I'll try to move through the the tracking and visibility and then get into the freight audit pretty quickly. But, um, oh, sorry, my thing just kicked me out. Hang on one second. All right, so we have different reports and shipments, okay? So um, as a user here, I can, I can come in here and every user can create any type of report that they want to view on their shipments, okay? So you can set up different fields. Um, just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll show you some of the ones that we already have in here. But if we just want to go in here and we want to look at, let's just say, hey, I want to see the last seven days, let me take a look at the shipments that we have, okay? And again, you can filter all of these and you can add different columns to these. So if you want to add columns, you can you can come in here, you can add different columns that you want to see, whatever fields. We capture so, so much information on each shipment that you can customize all of them, okay? So if I just, for example, you know, look at the shipment here, there's a couple options that I can do. If I want to view it, it'll bring me back to this page. But now this that the shipment's been picked up and it's been executed, if I want to get tracking information, I can simply click on this tracking. And what that will do here is it'll give me all my different tracking information, my status updates that the carrier provides. So same thing if I was just to go to the carry website, what will happen is it will, it'll just populate directly in here through the different APIs that we have with the carriers. 
Um, you can look at, you know, all your small parcel shipments. So if you want to just look at parcel, and again, like I had mentioned, you can create any type of view that you want. You could save it and run it as well. Um, now, if I'm back in here, and let's say that I want to actually track this on the carrier's website, I can go in here and I'll click on the link. And instead, what it will do is it'll actually bring me directly to the carrier's website. And this is where I'll get all my information as well. Okay. Now, that's more along the lines for your parcel, LTL, any of your truckload shipments when it comes to tracking. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So you can also look at, you know, your, your delivered shipments. So these are all the shipments that let's just look at all the shipments that have delivered in the last 30 days. So now I have all my shipments that have delivered in the past 30 days. And again, that I mentioned, we have the, the POD, so we can actually capture the POD and we store this POD directly in the system. So I know a lot of times that, you know, me as a shipper, I don't want to pay, you know, the carrier until I have my proof of delivery or, Hey, you know, my vendor or my customer doesn't want to pay me until they see a proof of delivery. So we have, um, we store this information in here. Um, you can look at all your on-time shipments. So shipments that were delivered on time, but you can also look at your delayed shipments. So for example, if we go in here and we look at 30 days out, you can see here, Hey, whatever type of relationship you, and agreement you have with your carrier, you can go ahead in here and you can look and you can say, okay, hey, this estimated delivery date was 12-4 when I booked it. However, it actually delivered on 12-5. So, you know, you can score your carriers if you have a rebate program with your carriers. Um, it's a great tool. And you can take these reports and you can customize them and you can export them. Um, totally up to you on how you want to manage this. And we'll help you guys create whatever type of reports that you guys want to create. Um, and then the last thing when it comes to visibility is we talked about the container tracking. So, you know, if, if you're shipping internationally and you're shipping ocean, um, we have a dash, you know, we have a tool here that we connect with. Um, and you can see we have, you know, our dashboard. So you can look at all your different shipments, your containers, you know, how many are delayed, uh, shipments at POD, um, you know, your, your top five carriers that you're working with. Uh, but if we go into the go track and let's say <clears throat> we want to actually look at some of the shipments that we have, um, you know, if we come in here and we look at, let's go to in transit and let's say, okay, Hey, I want to actually see where the shipment is. And I want to know when is it expected to, de to deliver and be at the port. So you'll see here on the, on the right side. Here's all, here's all my updates that I've gotten for this particular containers. You can also view it in a table view. So if you want to just look at it in a, in a different table view. And then up here, here's all the information that you would need as far as, you know, the carry ETA and then the prediction. So this is predicting that it's going to probably be three days late to get to Washington. All right. How am I doing on time, Brian? Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good. We uh, got 15 minutes left, Pat. All right, perfect. So I will just show one more thing and then we'll cover the freight audit portion of it. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, we do have the freight audit, right? And, and the way that it works is we set up an integration with the carriers, uh, typically an EDI 210 uh, or a file. Um, and what will happen is, you know, once a shipment gets delivered, the carrier will send an electronic invoice into our system. And our system will compare that invoice from what you booked it versus what they billed you for. And you can set a tolerance. You say, okay, hey, like I mentioned, if I want it down to the exact dollar. If it doesn't match, I want you to flag it and I want to take a look at it. Or, hey, if it's five, 10 bucks, I don't care. I'm not spending the time to fight with my carrier, right? We probably messed up. I'm totally fine. Uh, totally up to the customer, okay? Um, so what will happen is, you know, when you come in here and you look at your invoice auditing, what we'll have here is our accruals. So the accruals are all, these are all the bills we have to pay. Okay. So these are the bills that we have to pay. All right. Now we have a few different other um, buckets down here where you can look at, you know, orphan invoices, right? So an orphan invoice is, I, I didn't create the shipment in the system. Somebody might've created it, um, you know, and use my account number, 
So what that will do is that will go into an orphan invoice and then our system can say, hey, do we want to match that up? Is that a real shipment? Or you can uh, just deny it. Um, missing PODs. So if you want to look at all your shipments that, you know, maybe are missing PODs in the last 90 days, uh, this one doesn't have any, um, but your weight discrepancies, okay? So your weight discrepancies are a little bit different, okay? So here's the expected, um, you know, weight. Here's the invoice weight, okay? Um, so I know that this one is probably going to get flagged, all right? But here's what you would really look at, and this is where we would go ahead and we would actually go ahead and flag these, okay? So these ones here, if you look, okay? So these ones had a, a charge discrepancy on them. So what happened is, is the invoice came in and the invoice didn't match exactly what we had thought it was gonna match, okay? So if I go over here and I'm gonna show you how we can do this. If we go here, okay? And then we're not gonna move any here. And then we go all the way back. You'll see here, here's my expected weight. Here's my invoice weight. And now I have all the information on what the discrepancy was. Sorry, let me just move this over. All right, and then let me go down plus 90. Okay, let me refresh this. And let me have my size totals. Options. Okay. Okay. So once once you go in here and what you can do is you can look at these different shipments and you can see, you know, what the discrepancy was. So it looks like here this was a uh they charged us $69 more than we were expected to pay. So as an as an end user, what I can do is I can go in here and I can either select this shipment and then I can say, "Okay, hey, I'm going to mark this as approved." Or I'm going to mark it as reject, meaning that I don't want to pay this. I'm going to get with my carrier. Now, once you mark it as approved, now that's going to go into our approved bucket. In our approved bucket down here, okay, what this has here is this has all the invoices that came into the system that were automatically approved by POV or they were approved by the end user. So if you have somebody in finance or you have the logistics manager that approves them, um, those will get filtered in those buckets. And then what we do on top of that, is once that invoice is approved what we'll do is we can actually integrate back into infor and we can send that approved invoice gl coded back into infor for you as a customer to pay your carrier so you don't have to manually go back into infor and you have to enter all that information in on what you're actually going to pay um so that's the second part of it uh and then you can also just look at your rejected invoices as well which let's see if we have any in here and then we have our rejected invoices and then if you scroll over to all the way you will see that you can actually put different notes in there uh into the shipment so if you want to put some comments so this one was rejected because it was a duplicate and then you can add another note and so forth in there so that is um from from my side um you know i know we have 10 minutes left i definitely want to introduce dennis um so we actually um have a customer online um, that uses CSD and has integrated POV. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually turn it over to Dennis from Power and Tell, and I will let him go ahead and uh, speak on his experience with POV uh, in the implementation side as well. Hey, <clears throat> so Pat, can you hear? I can hear you, Dennis. It's all right. Um, well, I just uh, thank you for the opportunity. Just a moment. Um, we had, um, I, don't, I don't think we have enough time to share a couple of screens, but um, I will just say that uh, one of our first concerns, this with Power and Tell, we're a 60-year-old um, company this year, um, and um, we, we are multinational and multilingual and multi-currency, and um, had been using a, um, a legacy system for many many years and basically needed to upgrade our our capability to integrate with uh, we deal with AT&T and Verizon and a lot of uh, Fortune 100 companies and frankly even a lot of our tier 2 and tier 3 customers uh, as 
uh, software prices on ERPs have, have been targeted more for the uh, small in the SMB market. Uh, we see that a lot of those customers also are requiring a lot more uh, integration and uh, currency of information, where is the product? So um, we we um, got an email, came across from POV, said, um, wow, never heard of this company before, kind of scared to just go with somebody I've never heard of before. But we'll we'll give them we'll call them up. We talk with them. Um, it was pretty obvious right off the bat that the technology was about as current as you can get. And um, ironically, the um, the source the the um, knowledge the uh, industry knowledge of the people that we spoke with uh, was was unbelievable. Um, I mean, when we would go in and say, well, where is our, our UN hazmat number going to go on this bill of lading? And they say, oh, in the API, just put that in reference number three. And there you go. It's in reference number three. So what we have integrated with POV, um, and we started March 9th of this year, so we're brand new also. But we started March 9th, and our first actual integration of small parcel shipping from the RF scanner in TWL, not going through the screens that Pat just went through, but using the same capabilities. It just happens to be automated through the APIs. Um, that was March 9th. Our first integration that we pulled up with the warehouse was April 10th. So that was a 30 days to get, um, you know, in the integration for the first uh, small parcel carrier. And again, we're a little bit different because uh, we actually ship confirm the orders directly from the from our RF scanners. Um, but in the um, as far as um, what we what we actually have found out, we uh, we do have a lot of contract freight rates. Those are being honored. Um, so as the the items come down, the the parcels come down the pack line. Uh, right now, again, small parcel. Um, then uh, as we scan the carton IDs in TWL, goes out to POV, it's building the shipment in just as Pat was doing by hand. Um, we also have auto rating in place, which we really didn't intend on uh, actually doing until later on, but found that on different days, UPS and, and uh, depending on which country, but the small parcel carriers rates were changing uh, from day to day and uh, found that the auto rating was actually pulling back some better rates. And so we just moved most of the small parcel where there is not a do, what, I, what we call a do don't, uh, do don't ship from the customer. As long as they have not specified a particular uh, limitation there, we're going ahead and letting POV auto route. So uh, the person on the pack line um, will, will you know hit ship in the scanner and then um, it'll pause a moment, a couple of seconds, and then the label, um, uh, the labels will come out for whichever carrier was chosen. And then, of course, that carrier has been real time manifested. So we don't do the old print out the manifest at the end of the day kind of thing that we were doing. Um, let's see, very quickly, um, LTL we're still working on now because of the fact that we needed to, we wanted um, to integrate in the new CSD. Um, the freight terms, which are in the SASTF table, um, and that's where it'll store all the accessorial um, for lift gate and different comments for call before and all that. There's now a place for that in inside of uh, SX, and it's in the order header. Uh, pulls over to the order header, so we're um, we're integrating that as well as all the hazmat and third party uh, actual uh, EDI integration. Uh, let's see. Uh, the only other thing that, that really that I think is was kind of a lanyard to us, a little something extra that um, that we got done uh, and we had it really on for phase two, uh, but it worked out it's in phase one. And that is if you're in um, OEIO and you're looking at an order and you have the, you use the little contextual app for um, documents. If you're storing uh, documents or whatnot, um, then 
we store the pack list, the pick list, the invoice, the quote, the acknowledgement. And we now have coming in from POV, um, this was actually an, an idea from POV, uh, to say, hey, we can, we're going out and polling the carriers to find out where um, the, the, uh, the milestone, where, on what milestone is each of these, your shipments. So those they pushed those back to us, um, and I had a screen, but we don't have a chance to really look at it right now, that um, has where in one day we've gotten three um, updates from a carrier on a shipment. So in, while I'm um, the salesperson sitting in uh, OEIO, uh, I can click on the document view and see that all three, uh, of course, I just look at the most recent one, we'll pull up but it will give you every milestone as if you went to the carrier site with the tracking number like FedEx or UPS and um, all the way to the proof of delivery and who signed for it. So it, it the very first uh, milestone starts with the time that we scanned it in our warehouse and ends with the time that it got signed for on the other end. Um, so the nice thing about that is we can click that button and push that directly from just from the document manager. We can push that entire set of documents straight to the customer with one email. So the integration has worked out really, really well. Um, so um, again, we were, um, we were very nervous up front um, and they pushed us quite frankly a little bit, but we're ahead of schedule. They're waiting on us at this point. And uh, frankly, I, I would not pause about doing the project all over again. Awesome. And, and Appreciate that. that. And I think that's I think that's it for me. Really, it's just a really really good experience. Great. Appreciate that, Dennis. Appreciate your time as well too. Yeah, terrific. Sure. Uh, yeah, Pat, if you wouldn't mind pulling up the uh, promo that we've got going on, and yep. um, I would like to take the opportunity while we're waiting for that to come up to thank Pat for his presentation, uh, Dennis for the testimonial, and Raul for answering all the uh, busy chat questions we've had. We've had some number of really great chat questions. Normally, I'd read through those, but for uh, sake of time, I would just ask everyone that's on this call, if you haven't been following the chat, to please read a lot of those Q&A. There's a lot of really good good things there. So yeah. um, as typical NSA fashion, uh, we have a promo with our vendor partner. I'd like to thank Kobe for uh, offering this up. But uh, basically, if you're interested uh, and you sign up before the end of February, uh, you will have all of your um, deferred payments up until the successful implementation and go live. So uh, basically you're not paying until you're actually reaping the benefit. Also a 20% reduction in implementation service cost and that expires uh, at the end of April. I would ask that if you need to know more about your specific company, we certainly are more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with your team. Uh, please reach out to either POV or NSA. Um, again, everyone that's on this call will be getting a copy of um, uh, the recording of this session. And with that, I would like to uh, thank our presenters, thank our attendees, and that's a wrap. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Appreciate your time today. Feel free thank to reach you. out anytime with questions.